Hey guys, Ryan House here, and welcome back to Europa Universalis Rome. When we left off, we had just finished conquering uh, these three regions here in Macedonia after prolonged four-episode war. It was great. It was epic. I love that kind of stuff. So, and now we're going to be looking back at Rome here and seeing what we can do to make things better at home. Because while we were off fighting war, the populists were taking control of our Senate. So as you can see, we now have 36 populists in the Senate. Quite a few populists. Now we can go ahead and take a look at the populist faction only. Let's click here. And we can sort them by charisma. And we see the very, the most charismatic man here, Lucius Cornelius Scipio. Lucius Cornelius Scipio is currently the leader of the populist faction. That's a problem. Now some of you guys want me to go ahead and imprison this man or begin the executions. And in do so doing, we would raise our tyranny and lower the loyalty throughout Rome. I'm not quite sure how we're going to approach this scenario, but I'm going to give it my best shot this Let's Play to see if we can at least push back the populist scourge today, right now. And we'll see if my tactics work. If they don't work by the end of the Let's Play, I'm going to open up an avenue, a channel of communication between you and me, and we're going to figure it out together. All right? Okay. So, we have some troops withdrawing from Macedonia as we speak. So they'll be returning to the Greek provinces that we now own. And up here we had... That's right, we had taken off one of the armies, and he'll be moving back up. Okay. So our armies are moving back into position from whence they were to whence they came. And then we have some decisions available here. Ooh, interesting. Okay. Army reform. Take the first steps towards a complete reform of the army. Work towards the establishment of a permanent standing army, recruited from the masses, equipped with weapons supplied by the state. Hmm. Historically, Rome was one of the first countries in the world to have a standing professional army. It's what, dif it's, uh, it's what made Rome different from a lot of the other civilizations at the time, was that Rome was a civilized nation. Civilized nations had different ways of dealing with everything. War, for instance, Rome decided to have a professional army. In fact, Rome after the, I think it was the first or the second Macedonian War, was the first war where soldiers were then put on salary. Why is that important? Well, historically, soldiers uh, were not paid a, a salary like wage, like a uh, once a month kind of wage. Um, rather, they were allowed to take spoils of war, or they were doing it out of honor, or because they were forced to, because they were levied. But Rome decided they'd start paying their soldiers a wage. Now, a lot of historians debate, well, what do they pay them? Do they pay them gold? Do they pay them silver? What do they pay them? Well, it, depend. it depends on the, uh, the region and the time. Rome did pay their men in Parmesan cheese, for instance. And I'm not kidding you. Uh, the Roman cheese at the time was very much like Parmesan cheese, the stuff you spread on your pasta, you know, you, you uh, shred it on your pasta, or uh, sprinkle it, I guess you could say. Grind it. Grate it. That's the word I was looking for. Yes, so that hard cheese was actually quite valuable, and a lot of Roman soldiers were paid in wage with Parmesan cheese. <laughs> so, I don't think it was called Parmesan. It might have been called Parmesan. Um, but yes, that is a fact. And, let's see here, let's pull our ships back because we seem to have pirates blockading Rome. We can't have that. Oh, another thing I wanted to do uh, while we're in this rebuilding mode, we need to rebuild our, our navy back to its uh, Mediterranean power status. So we'll start doing that right now. All right. So, yes, let me go back to where we're at. Okay. I got off track there. Army reform. Okay. Ruler has a uh, martial value higher than seven. All right. Rome gets army reform. 
given the following effects. National manpower modifier plus 4%, land organiz organization plus 8, and the maintenance costs go up, however. So we'll go ahead and do that. We take the first steps towards modernizing our army. It's great. All right. If you guys know any historical tidbits about the Roman Empire during this time period, feel free to leave your comments below. And I'll read them, and I'll absorb that information. Okay? Okay. Let's get on with the show. All right, up here, we can colonize provinces. Hello, bros! Yay! Finally! Yes, we're going to go ahead and colonize that place. As you, can, as you can see over here, the Averni have been colonizing their provinces next door. So they become a stronger regional power. And they're also a despotic monarchy. It's very interesting. Rulers reign for life, and they can have three ideas. One military, one economic, and one civic. And the build costs are negative 33%. That's pretty good. Not too bad. Okay. Let's get on with it. Got some vengeance here. Interesting. Very interesting. Alright, so I wanted to see if we can make some people happy here. Alright, we'll go to unemployed here. Actually, we'll look at all we'll get unemployed. Okay. Sorting by objectives. Alright. This man wants to be Navy Quaestor. I think we could do that for him. Let's do that. What was his name? Sorry about that. Let's find out what his name was. Gaius Attilius Regulus. Navy Quaestor. Okay. Become Navy Quaestor. Gaius Attilius Regulus. There you go. Alright, let's look at the list again. Pontifex Maximus. All these men here want to become rich. So many men want to become rich. Doesn't every man want some kind of uh, comfort in life? All right, get Marcus Sempronius Tudetanus a job. Maybe we can do that for him. He's pretty loyal as it is, though. Um, all these men want to get married. Mm -hmm. Okay. So all these men want to get married. We're going to do what we can here to promote the chances of these men getting married by handing a, a few titles, minor titles here and there. Don't really want the populace to get married though. Hmm. Well, regardless, they might turn to a different faction later on though, so we can't just write off the populace entirely. God, look at all these guys that want to get married. It's crazy. So we'll help the ones that we can. We'll help these five, these five here. We'll promote some augurs. We'll promote some tribunes to the soldiers. And some pontifexes. And uh, tribune of the treasury. So we did what we could. And these guys want to have sons. Okay. So they want to procreate. Good. Now employed people. They have objectives as well. This man here wants to become... Ducks of Magna Gracia. Alright, well, let's look at Magna Gracia here and see what kind of man we have in power. And overall, he's not that great. But he's going to hold the office until November. So we'll just let him hold the office. When his time's up, we'll promote somebody else. Alright. Let's look back at employ people again. One man wants to become ruler here. And he's really crappy. Hope he doesn't become ruler. Uh, we have a lot of guys that want deaths of arrival. Huh. And then these men here want to get people jobs. Hmm. Tertius Posthumius Magellus. He just wants a job. He wants to have a son. Uh, I'm wondering if we can strengthen one of the factions in government. Huh. Let's see here. Constructed buildings. Lack of buildings. You know what? We can pour our money into building buildings. That's one way to get the uh, populace back down. Let's go ahead and try to use our ledger here for this. Economic overview. I think it's country overview. Yep. Country overview buildings. Alright, so here we have temples. Here we have stockades. 
All right, so let's sort them by tax revenue. And let's see, we build stockades right now. What was the other one? Irrigation, was it? This one, irrigation. Any of these provinces need irrigation? Yeah. Thessaly and Gallius Cisalpina. Now, their tax revenue is already pretty low, but I'll go ahead and build it for now. We have the money to spare. Why not? Okay. Ambition fulfilled, Gaius Atilius Regulus. Gain some military faction. Excellent. That's good. So the populace are very, very powerful. A new governor. Certainly helps to have good friends in high places. If it weren't for you, Tiberius Mamilius Polis would probably not even be considered a potential candidate. Tiberius Emilius Polis. Emilius Polis. Martial Charisma Finesse. He's not that bad. Gaius Duilius Falco, on the other hand. <clears throat> He's quite loyal. Both of these men would lose. Ar Achaea. I don't think anybody is in Achaea. Let's go look at Achaea. Okay? I think this is Achaea. This is Achaea. Okay, of course we'll help them. Nobody was uh, governing those provinces, so now we do have a governor. In fact, let's look at all our provinces here and make sure we have governors everywhere. Yes, we do. Okay. So, the Senate wanted to appoint a man to the role of governor. So we went ahead and allowed that happen. And now, I do need to make sure that our current men in control of our legions are loyal to Rome. So let's go ahead and quickly look at our men, make sure they are loyal to Rome. He is loyal to Rome. He's loyal to Rome. He's loyal to Rome. Okay, so those men are loyal to Rome. He's loyal to Rome. He's also loyal. This man here, this man here is losing loyalty to Rome. All right. So, uh, Medius Attilius Regulus, we're going to have to replace this man here. You see Marcus Aemilius Paulus is very unloyal now to Rome. There's nothing we can really do to get him back. Uh, let's see. The Propraetor, Gaius Aurelius Cota. He's one of the Marshal Seven leaders I was able to free up by appointing uh, the man as Praetor. All right. Does anybody want to become Edile? Doesn't look like it. Just a couple guys want to become Pontifex Maximus. Okay. Okay. Well, so far, so good. There we go. See, all these men, we gave them little minor titles, okay? And that's what happens when you give them minor titles. They gain a little bit of family prestige, or they gain some prominence themselves, and they're able to marry. So that's important. Let's look at the unemployed one more time. We'll go down the list and see if anybody wants to get married. So we don't have any titles to grant these men. We have some titles to grant these men, though. So let's go ahead and grant some titles to these men. Tribune of the Soldier. Tribune of the Treasury. Augur. And last but not least, uh, Pontifex. Okay? And then these two men here. Tribune of the Soldiers. And Treasury. Okay. And then these two men. <laughs> Keeps going. Lots of guys. All right, but you want to look at their prominence, right? If they don't have any prominence. Prominence. If they have zero prominence, then they're probably not going to mar get married. Now, these two guys we probably could have gone without giving them anything, um, but it's too late, and it's not a big deal. Okay, so that's taken care of. Now, you see, uh, the Senate once again gave us another mission to take control of Macedonia. So. I guess the Senate's thinking, well, they're almost finished off. Let's go ahead and finish them off. We're having, we're having a pretty easy time taking out the Macedonians. Why not just wipe them out entirely? Now, this man here. I forgot, the naval leader here. 
He's loyal to Rome. Okay. All right, and more men, ambition fulfilled, as you can see. Let's go look at this real quick. Tiberius Cornelius married, 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 married. Excellent. See that? That's how it goes, guys. All right. So uh, give you guys some minor titles. I'll give them some prominence. Hey, this guy's uh, this guy's heading somewhere. The ladies go crazy about that. And then they get married. All right. So now they'll go on to further their ambitions within Rome. They got married, they'll have some sons, then they'll want some titles, and they'll want some positions in the Senate, and overall that's good. They won't turn into populists that way. Judgment Day. Lucius Aemilius Barbal has been plotting, but now he finally thinks he has the evidence needed to see his greatest rival exiled. Leave it in the hands of the court. 50% chance Lucius Cornelius Lentulus is banished to Carthage, or... 50% chance Lucius Melius Barbola loses 10 popularity. Now, Barbola. Barbola is the son of the late Barbola, I believe. Yeah, his father was Lucius Melius Barbola. Very interesting. And who is this man here? Okay, so this is the son of Lentulus. Alright, leave it in the hands of the court. We'll see what happens here. I'm guessing those ships are retreating from us. Well, we'll just go ahead and follow those pirates. Not sure what happened. Let's look at Lentulus Barbala here. I don't know what happened to the Barbala family here. Here we go. Lucius Milius Barbala. Uh, he might have lost some popularity. I'm not quite sure. All right. People who are not popular will probably not get voted towards consul. If you're not popular, people aren't going to want to vote for you. So those men are uh, probably not going to be uh, important leaders in Roman society. Doesn't mean that they can't gain popularity from other <clears throat> from other ways. It just means that uh, they might have some negative stats, etc. All right. Let's look at religion here, and we can go ahead and vote Cupid. Woohoo! That's nine for nine, guys. Nine for nine. Cupid loves Rome. Yeah. And look at that. We have a new colony in Alabroge. Excellent. Very happy about that. Now, let's make sure that it's safe. And by safe, I mean let's build a stockade in that place. Like so. And... We'll move the regiment from Liguria to Alabroge, and these men can stay up on the border in Gallia Cisalpina. Okay. Now, the Verni, they're not very strong, and neither are the, uh, the Sequani or any of these tribal kingdoms up here. <coughs> but we're not going to go to war with them just yet. We don't have any Casabelli against them, and it would make a great deal of sense to go about doing that. Oh, look at this. They're at war with the Lusitani. Wow. So they're gaining some ground because the rebels took this place, blocked off any army movement that way, and the Lusitani are, are on the war path here. And we also have uh, a new area up here where we can have a governor. Your success brings you enemies. So Lucius Cornelius Lentulus. He's the current consul. Uh-huh. He's the current consul. Can't back down. Becomes rival of Servius Fulvius Patinus. Patinus. <sighs> He's a very poor man. Lentulus is a very rich man. Okay. And we've gained the core province. Ooh, excellent. My consul, the province of Syracuse, is now considered part of our patrimony. We should defend to last drop. Panormus as well. Sardinia. Corsica. Look at that, guys. Chia's rebelling. Oh, Gosh. 16 units there, huh? He's a decent commander. Yeah, he's very decent, actually. So we'll go ahead and have him move there and take care of the rebels. Okay. So, new governor. Becomes governor of Narbonessus. I'm believing that's this area up here. Yeah, Narbonessus. And who is this man, though? Gaius Servilius Scipio. Gaius Servilius Scipio. 
Okay. Okay, he can become governor. Excellent. Good job. Congratulations. Now, the fleet will continue to grow. I hate when that happens. Having some children being born. Build some more triremes. Oh, we can't afford anymore. Okay. No problem. Yeah, we went broke kind of fast there, huh? Taxation, trade, tributes, excellent. Alright, so we have a couple trade areas that we can go ahead and free up. Let's look at the battle over here real quick. Yeah, they're doing they're doing pretty good. It's just uh, militia that they're fighting. Okay. So killed some rebels, the rest dispersed. Alright, so let's try to fill some trade, shall we? Let's see here. Some trade. They can trade with Syracuse. How come they can't trade with Achaia? Let some time go by here. Are they already trading with Achaia? They are. Uh, possibly. Maybe not. So maybe we can do some trade up here. Achaia. And, uh... Where else can we trade? Over here they have... Huh. So they were already getting wine, so that's why they can't trade wine with Ikea. Syracuse. Okay. They failed, but the other one succeeded. Okay. So we'll just keep trying here. Hmm. These two provinces can trade next door to each other. Excellent. Okay, what about here? There we go. Ah, uh, failed. Why? Why would you fail? Alright. So Rome's expanding. Rome is becoming very powerful. I'm happy. Alright, I'm getting quite a few ships being built, it's always good. Okay, slow down a little bit. One, two, three. <clears throat> Alright. So now we have a fleet of 29 and growing. Excellent. Very, very good. 30 ships. 30 plus ships. I think Macedonia moved their army away. I wonder if they moved to Euboa. Probably not. They could have. Probably not. I'm thinking that, are they at war with anybody? No. So maybe they're moving over here that's the case. That's fine. We might have to <clears throat> secure some uh, military access. Something like that. Don't have enough senators in favor of declaring war. Populist faction grew so fast. 30% favor. Okay. Military faction is growing, 57% political attraction. However, there's still not a lot of military faction members. They're so small. Uh, we can improve that possibly by appointing... Well, let's look at this man here. His charisma is just crap. It's paltry. Okay. How much would it cost to raise our stability? 262 gold. It's quite a bit. So I don't think we'll be doing that anytime soon. So, <clears throat> Kea is the last place that needs a real trade route set up. There's not a lot of places that we can trade at. Lucius Cornelius Lentulus is going to go ahead and increase the tax in where? Rome. Excellent. Rome. Look at all that money we're getting. 
Oh, jeez, that's crazy. I like it. All right. Let's try to trade with these guys again. Yeah, there we go. So our trade's looking pretty good. Nice solid bit of extra income there. Our armies and our navies. Okay, let's look at our military. Troop support limit up to 100 now. We can increase the size of our military. Oops, I think we'll go ahead and be doing that. But uh, priority goes to the navy right now. Priority to the navy. And we have more pirates. So let's go ahead and take care of these pirates here. We'll have them go back to Rome. Alright. Have these other ships meet up in Rome. And I'm wondering if we have a pirate problem. No, no pirate problem. We do have one there though. Hmm. Oh, I'm not going to worry about it too much. Alright. Speed it up. Time of peace. So the next time we declare war on Macedonia will be in three years, uh, the truce will expire, and then the third war of, against Macedonia will begin. You can see our manpower is going up by 1.2 thousand, 1.2 thousand every month, and our maximum manpower is 148 thousand. Not bad. Oh yeah, we can build some more provincial improvements. Let's go ahead and look for that. Let's see here. Uh huh. Killed some ships. Good job. Good job. Okay. So provincial improvements. Build a temple. Build stockades. Let's build some temples. Why not? You know, we haven't been building a lot of temples. We'll build some temples all over Rome. We'll just start spreading the Roman religion everywhere. And I'm wondering, if I build a temple, if I build a temple here where the religion is Druidism, or here where it's Druidism, or here where it's here, here, and here where it's Greek, I'm wondering if that will improve the ability to convert those people to the Roman religion. If that's the case, then we need to start doing that in those uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 provinces, and here, and here, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, we got another deified uh, ruler here, because he's probably part of the populist pa uh, faction. Oh, jeez. Okay, national revolt risk is going to be going up. Stability cost modifiers are going to go up. And we have Scipio. I believe he is the populist faction leader. Yay! Boo! Boo! Shame on them. Oh. They're so powerful. Unused trade routes, lack of buildings, long period of peace. This man here is just, uh, has so, has so much, uh, so much charisma. He's 65, so he has a, he's, he has a risk of dying just due to old age in the next 10 years or so. 5 to 10 years. So don't worry about it too much. I'm thinking that's the main reason why it was the war exhaustion from the two consecutive wars that we've been fighting. It was the lack of buildings back home. It was uh, the lack of trade routes. It's all that and the charismatic leader, the Scipios. The Scipio family was a large, uh, large patron of the Roman society back in the time of the Roman. Scipio family was a very large and powerful family. Um, they did rule Rome at times as consuls. They were uh, very effective and rich people in Roman society. New commander. See, this is just lose-lose here. This man here, he's a loyal man. Uh, five versus... 
Okay, I'm just going to go for it. <clears throat> just go for it. We can invoke another omen here. Let's see. I think National Revolt Risk. Let's try it. Cross your fingers! Oh, uh, yeah! So we'll cut down the National Revolt Risk across our, our Great Empire. Ambition fulfilled. Excellent. We got married. So the man that was uh, that just left, or um, that just gained First Legion also got married. All right, we also have Barbarian Horror approaching. Uh, the Dug, uh, Dul Gumni, the Gumni Barbarians. Interesting. I think we might have to start placing scouts out in these territories here and thinning down the hordes. Tal Palliavanetti is coming along nicely. So is that place. Quite a bit of civilization here. Yeah. Okay. So, these areas are starting to become civilized. That's good. And the Macedonians are back over there. Now, I'm going to take a fleet. Small fleet here. Actually, let's just merge up all our fleets here. And we won the first battle, killed 4,000 of them, not bad. Not bad at all. Okay, so we want to build some more temples, right? Yeah, okay. So we wanted to build temples in Greece. I think we're going to build one in the largest city, which seems to be Achaia. So we're going to go ahead and build a temple in Achaia. Build a temple there. Excellent. All right. Barbarians are going to attack again. <clears throat> Empress accepted peace with the Lusitani. You know they were at war with the Lusitani. Whoa! Whoa! Now I don't remember if uh, Arabia here and uh, Nabatea was always on are uncivilized like that. Maybe it was. I don't remember. But look at that, guys. The Seleucid Empire is just crumbling. Oh, I got a good score there. This man here. He just took control of the First Legion, too, recently. Okay, so... We're in the process of Romanizing the Greek world over here. And I believe the next place we're going to try is here in Argolis. So come here, Argolis. And I think they already have a temple there. Okay. So we'll build one here in Thessaly instead. Um, oh, there's already construction progress. So Sparta. Sparta. Sparta instead. All right. Build. Yes. Excellent. Alright. Barbarians are slowly starting to fall apart up there. Not that bad. Keeping an eye on the Carthaginians, they seem to have quelled the rebellion. They don't seem to have moved against the fort yet. I would like for these provinces to remain independent from Carthage. I don't want to see Carthage going around conquering. Uh, in fact, they are part. These are the Lusitani. Okay, that were with Carthage. And are these people still allied with Carthage? Yes. Egypt declared war upon their new enemies, the Pontus. I don't know how they'll ever reach them, but uh, here's the Pontus up here. Oh, well, they're right next door to each other. Egypt is becoming very, very powerful. All right, the barbarians were quelled. We gained more slaves for Rome. And we gained some barbarians in Gallia Cisalpina, which we quickly put down and gained even more slaves. Okay, excellent. Very, 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 very good. Death by illness. A tragedy. Aulus Apollonius Prisca has been in poor health, and though his friends hoped for recovery, it was not to be. He could not cling on to life. He was 11 years old, 
It's very unhealthy. He's a son of this man here, Polyperchon Apollonid. And I believe this man... Oh, yes. This man was Greek. He was... Was he a member of Magna Gracia, who we had captured? Or was he one of the Greek men over here who we had imprisoned? Huh. You know what? This man's... Both of these men are pretty loyal. He'd go back to Macedonia. He would also go back to Macedonia. They're both excellent commanders. Just excellent. Alright. Now, I want to change out the Praetor, and let's get another Praetor here. This man was a uh, seven skill. Okay. So, Spurius Carvilius Maximus. Uh, Lucius Mamilius Vitulus. He is not very loyal. Gosh, he's ambitious. He wants to become ruler. He wants a title. Former Quaestor. Okay. This man here, guys, Sulpicius Gallus. The new Praetor. He can serve Rome well, position of legate in the future. Okay. And friend in trouble. Okay, so we gained some power in the Senate. Uh, but not from the populist faction. You can see the military faction grew by three members. Okay. One of Lucius Cornelius Scipio's better friends has been careless enough to get caught in a bribing scandal. Populist faction gained one senator. He brought this upon himself. Okay. Yeah, we don't want the populist faction to grow in power. Okay. And, uh, I think we're... At the end of the month, we can build another temple. We just need some more money. Build another temple. Gosh, look at that, guys. We're getting 11.22 gold every month. That's very nice. Okay. Tiberius Sempronius Gatius of the First Legion had a daughter. Sempronia Gacha Prima. Death by old age. Ah, Lucius Cornelius Scipio. He passed away. Aha! Victory! Victory, yes? Farewell. Kick him right into the grave. Lucius Cornelius Scipio was ruling Rome as consul when he passed away. A new term, Lucius Julius Libo, was elected to office, a member of the mercantile faction. All right. Excellent. So, the populist faction lost a good leader. And the most charismatic man is usually the leader of the faction, I believe. See, this man has a charisma of six. He's a very charismatic man. You have two new sensors we can appoint. Let's appoint... See, once again, sensor. Senate influence plus two per point of charisma. Stability cost and population growth. So we really want to appoint somebody who's very charismatic, like Gaius Attilius Bulbus here. He's a member of the religious faction, which is small. I would like to have members of the military faction, however the military faction has some pretty paltry members right now. Uh, they're not very charismatic. Like this man, he's a maniac, he's vengeful, he's proud. This man's vengeful and proud, you know. Uh, proud. All these men, they're proud. Proud, proud, proud. They're all proud. So let's actually increase the size of the religious faction uh, as best we can. And let's see what that'll do for us here. So the religious faction currently has a 43% political attraction. That's not too bad. And with these new censors, it should go up. 55% political attraction to the religious faction. Okay. And as you can see, uh, they've already started gaining some members. And we also have the mercantile faction, which is quite strong. And actually the military faction gained some members uh, this month. That's good. 
And the Civic faction is still uh, in its dark years here, although they do have a very strong political traction as well. Lack of buildings on new train, pure peace. Okay. okay, so good. We have another populist faction member coming up here. <sighs> yeah, if we go to government, we can look, go and look at this man, Alias Posumius Albinius, populist faction. Uh, he wants to become ruler. If we smear his reputation, there's a 65% chance. Yes. Succeeded, and we were not discovered, so that man will become far less popular to the point where he can't even run for consul. Excellent. So we got one populist faction, faction leader out of the way. Now, let's look at our, our current faction leader here. This man here, Lucius Julius Lebo. Very popular man, so we don't need to encourage popularity for him. Let's instead... Let's try research. Cross your fingers. Yes. All right. It's an age of enlightenment here. We can proclaim an oligarchic, oligarchic public. Nope. I don't like it. They ran for two years. They can be reelected in ten. That's not bad. That's not bad right there. Military, economic, and civic. That reminds me. I haven't been paying attention to this up here. I'm sorry about that, guys. But we have, oh, horse lords, professional soldiers, excellent. National faith, omen, power, that's what he changed it to. Um, blockade efficiency and regiment recruitment speed aren't that great, though. Okay. Alright. So, Rome is prospering. All is well. The fleet is growing in size. We're building buildings, building temples everywhere. It's very, very good. All right, temple, temple, temple. I already had a temple, right? Yeah. They're building one. They needed a temple. They're building one. All right, so Syracuse has a temple. Enormous has a temple. Sardinia, Corsica. Sardinia needs a temple. So let's build a temple here. Build a temple. Alright. If you look at our faith, remember last time, a couple playthroughs ago, we looked at the power of the Roman religion. It was at 4.5. It's at 5.6. So I do think the Roman religion uh, is improved by building temples throughout the provinces. I think that's very good. Look like Druidism. Druidism is one of the most popular religions out there. A lot of these areas out here see over here religion, shamanism. Over here, probably Druidism. Yep. Up here is probably Druidism as well. Yeah. Animism. So you have a lot of different religions out there. Oh, Carthage. Difference to Dido, War Zoshin. Different culture group. And Lusitania is falling apart. Carthage is way too powerful. Way too powerful for them. And Pontus is fighting back against Egypt up here. I would like to see Pontus win. I'd rather see a stronger Pontus than a very powerful Egypt. I don't want to be fighting against Egypt up here all the time. I want to be focusing against the Carthaginians shortly after the Greeks. Okay. Okay. So... Rivalries. One of the Edels can't accept the fact that a novice homo has received so much influence lately. He's been searching frantically for anything that can be used against him, and now it seems like he has finally found something. Spread the word, he still has my support. He either gains <laughs> assertive or deceitful. Let's try deceitful. I don't know what deceitful does. Uh, I didn't open it up. Crap. Why didn't I do that? Treacherous friend. He'll pay for this. 
forgiveness. Okay. Parthia declared war against the Seleucids yet again. The Seleucid Empire is just going to fall apart. Yeah. Quite certain of that. Rome's strong, though, however. Rome's very strong now. And uh, the Lusitani are about to get absorbed, probably, by the Carthaginians. Yeah, so that'll be the end of them. And I wouldn't mind going to war with uh, Averni here. The Averni. Alright, that'd be nice. Be nice to gain some ground on our way, because when we fight Carthage, we're already going to be expanded out to here, probably. And have a nice foothold in Greece. It'll be good. Now... I'm going to cancel military access with these people. We no longer need... Yeah, so, like I said, Lusitani got fully annexed by Carthage. So now they got a couple more rebellion, uh, rebellious provinces on their hand. And the Bosporan Kingdom accepted peace with Egypt. Alright, so we wanted to cancel uh, military access with these men. They're allied with Macedonia, so we got to keep that in mind when we go to war against Macedonia. That we're going to have to take out the yeah, Anatolian I told them league really quick. So we'll take them out, we'll annex them, and we'll continue with Carthage. We'll take these two provinces here. And oh, look at that. Macedonia spread its power out here. Very interesting. I don't remember who they uh Huh. Macedonia considers it a pro uh, core province. So Macedonians are gonna be pushed out over here. So we'll have those areas. Hopefully we'll have those areas. That's the idea. I don't know if I can annex all of this in one swoop. I don't know. If we can, we'll try. If not, we'll have to do a fourth war with Macedonia. It all depends on how powerful Macedonia is. Maybe these people will conquer parts of Macedonia, or these people over here, or these people over here, or somebody. We'll see. And apparently, Macedonia is at war with Egypt. And Egypt came in. And took Euboea. Euboea. And they're... Oh, I didn't even notice. You guys are probably screaming at me here, but Egypt's um, sieging Macedonia. Look at that army. Look at that. 20 units there, 29 units there. You don't want to fuck with the Egyptians. Those guys, these guys are powerful. They're much larger than we are. Okay. Ah, maybe the Egyptians and the Carthaginians can go to war with each other. That'd be great. Let's go get some pirate ships. Right, and while we're doing that, we're going to continue building our temples. And we'll build forums, and we'll build stockades, and we'll continue building buildings and ships. And we'll have all of Rome uh, very strong. Very, very strong. Okay. Build some irrigation there. Okay. Alright guys, well I think that's it for this Let's Play. Thank you for joining me, and in the next Let's Play we'll continue building Rome up to its greatness, and prepare for the war against Macedonia, which will start in one year. So we're really close to another war with Macedonia. Um, it might be a good idea to attack, but I want to see what happens after the Egyptians kick their butts. Shortly after the Egyptians kick their butts, then we can move in and kick their butts again. Alright, sound like a plan? Alright guys. Leave your comments below, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.